Hello and welcome to the web series, Zero PM Pieces. My name is Sarah Hale and I'm the project coordinator of a really exciting new research project called Zero PM. In the Zero PM Pieces, the researchers in the project will tell you about one piece of the Zero PM puzzle that they're working on. So without further ado, here comes a Zero PM piece. Um, hello to everybody. This is uh, Michael Neumann from the German Environment Agency um, in Dessau in Germany. And um, in the third Zero PM piece, I'm going to talk about the PMT VPVM criteria. And I'm going to um, give you a little bit uh, insight in the history and the development process. And also we'll do an outlook in the implementation uh, in, into regulation of these criteria. So to start, um, and as introduction, uh, PMT, VPVM substances are persistent and mobile in the aquatic environment. These intrinsic substance properties allow them to spread to the sources of our drinking water, and contamination can be irreparable as PMT, VPVM substances may break through filters and may survive drinking water treatment. And it's also common knowledge that it's impossible to predict the long-term effects of an emission because entry and possible effects are decoupled in time and or space. And this means that the impact can be observed long after and far away from the point of release into the environment. And as introduction here, I'm presenting uh, the assessment scheme that we are proposing for the PMT VPVM assessment. And on this first slide, I have the uh, persistent and very persistent criteria. These are actually identical to the Annex 13 of REACH and has been copied from, from them. And the second um, assessment criteria is then the mobility criteria, the M and VM. And it's very important to notice that uh, this criteria only applies to a substance that has been previously assessed as persistent or very persistent substance. And as you can see, um, in 2019, we proposed to use the cutoff value for the log KOC of uh, 4.0 for the mobility criteria and uh, lower 3.0 for the very mobile criteria. And last introductionary slide, and also very important to mention, is that we propose a two-step approach. So first are uh, the um, comparison with the hazard-based criteria, and we propose this to be done for all the PM, for all the substances um, under reach. So to identify all PMT VPM uh, substances. And this can be done by the registrant using the registrant data. And the second step is then an emission characterization. And here the aim is um, to minimize the emissions into the environment for these substances. And this can be done by risk re re reduction, sorry, risk reduction measures um, and by I using uh, safer alternatives. So how were the um, PMT VPM uh, criteria developed? As you can see here in the, in the figure, we have three phases. We call them emergence, consultation, and utilization. And um, it all started 2009 and it, it ran until 2015, where UBA developed under each new criteria to identify substances which have intrinsic substance properties that indicate a hazard to the sources of our drinking water. Then we had a second phase where <clears throat> UBA carried out three public consultation to ensure a wide agreement on the PMT VPVM criteria. And since 2019, we are in the third phase where the criteria have been widely used under REACH to identify and regulate uh, persistent mobile substances. As you can see in the figure on the right side, this process is, is nicely accomplished by three workshops that we um, 
um, held here at UBA. So let's jump into the first phase. Um, it, as as you recall, um, the reach regulation reach, uh, the the um, chemicals regulation reach became 2006 into force. Um, we then had 2008 the first PBT substances on the candidate list. The candidate list for the authorization um, that was new at that time under uh, the chemical regulation. And this was actually the origin of the idea. Um, it was to look in the legal interface or the legal gap between the REACH regulation and the drinking water regulation. And we noticed that REACH lacks a proper mechanism to protect the sources of our drinking water as registrants are not required to identify intrinsic substance properties that indicate a potential drinking water continent. And the emissions of raw water relevant chemicals, that was actually the term we used at that time. So the emissions into surface water and groundwater should be avoided or kept low as possible for the precautional protection of the environment and the human health. That was from the beginning on the idea of this concept to reduce emissions, to avoid emissions. And the question we were asking ourselves at that time was, which substance endanger the drinking water resources. And on the right hand, you see the poster from 2009 where we first presented this um, idea or this, this concept. It took quite some years then to further develop this. And in 2012, I had a, a presentation, a talk on the German um, CTEC conference uh, in Leipzig. And there you can see the slide in the middle I presented for the first time these, uh, this terminology uh, PMT and we then developed that further to and um, in 2015 I gave a presentation on CTEC Europe in uh, Barcelona where we actually presented uh, the first set of uh, criteria. We then entered the second phase and we uh, and we did um, consultation on this proposal and this was supported by a large uh, research project which was uh, um, done by Hans Peter Arp and Sarah Hale and um, as you all know we couldn't have done the development the further development of this criteria without Hans Peter and Sarah and I'm, I'm still very thankful for this uh, support that we received. Um, yeah, it was a, uh, as it, these years were really exciting. In 2016, the PMT substances was voted as the new hot topic under reach at the CTEC Europe in Nantes. Uh, we, 2017, we started the consultation phase first by a workshop uh, with industry, but then we also gave our proposal to ECAS PPT expert group and to the risk management expert meeting. And within only a few weeks and months, we received so many comments and suggestions that we actually, within the year 2017, we actually updated our proposal and resubmitted it uh, to these groups. And let me just mention um, then the 2018 workshop, which was held in Berlin. It was number two of three PMT workshops. The first one was actually here in Dessau, still in German, with only 28 attendants. Um, 2018, we had already over 100 uh, participants, and last year we held the third PMT workshop online with um, over 600 uh, participants. Um, the second phase, the consultation phase, um, led to the publication of the um, result of the scientific and technical development. We proposed this um, to Caracal in July 2019. And it's quite important to notice that we received comments from really a lot of individuals, 119 we counted from over 13 uh, member states. Um, and it's also important to mention that we 
based the development of the PMT VPM criteria on monitoring data, simulation and model studies, and on impact considerations. So this is the outcome. On the left side, you see the final report from the research project from uh, Hans-Peter and Sarah. And on the right side, you see the uh, publication of this um, short document uh, where the criteria are justified um, from my side and uh, my colleague Ivo. So I really recommend you to have a look at these uh, documents. And then we entered the third phase, which we call now utilization phase. These criteria have been picked up, for example, by the member state committee and by other member states, and they use them to identify substances of very high concern on the basis of the equivalent level of concern. And you see here the, uh, the substances, PFBS, GenX, 1.4 dioxane and now currently under consideration PFHXS. We also used these criteria ourselves within the research project to identify PMT VPVM substances that are registered under REACH. So in 2019, we published a list of 119 um, substances and we will publish very soon an update, a second version of this, of this list. And in 2019, ChemSec also picked up our criteria and added a new um, category on their well-known uh, SIN list. And um, they now encourage industry to substitute 16 identified PMT VPVM substances. And the criteria have been used to in environmental monitoring by prioritizing substances based on the intrinsic substance properties in addition with emission characters, emission considerations um, that was, has been first done by the PROMOTE project. Um, you see here from 57 um, substances that they sought, they detected actually 43 and 23 of them were found for the first time ever in Europe. The same has been done by a Norwegian project. Um, they looked for 85 substances and found 75. And in our currently running project that will be finished soon, we did the same. Um, we looked at uh, 34 um, organic uh, PM substances and found 26 and we looked at 43 PFAS and found 30 of, of them. And now actually we were quite delighted uh, that we entered a fourth phase parallel to the third phase and I call this the implementation into the regulation and this phase started actually with the publication of the chemical strategy for sustainability and the European Commission explicitly set the aim uh, to add new hazard class classes under CLP and REACH and this included the PMT VP VM hazard class and just only seven or eight months later the European Commission actually uh, published their position paper and sent this uh, to the ECAS uh, PPT expert group. So what they did is they did, they did um, follow the same track that we did three years uh, before in the year 2017. So they went to the PBT expert group to start a scientific discussion again. This was uh, May and June last year. And then they went on the political uh, level and um, addressed the Caracal with a potential a draft proposal on these new hazard classes and um, asked for comments um, until end of last year. And the overall goal, goal you see on the right side are new hazard classes in CLP regulation and a revision of the CLP regulation. 
So just to give you a, a very quick overview of what, what are the current discussion in the PBT expert group and the CARCAL on the criteria. So it seems to be looking at the persistent criterion. It seems to be very clear that this should be exactly the same as for the PBT VPVM, uh, sorry, VPVB assessment. It seems also agreement that all environmental compartments should be covered, including the marine compartment. And as I mentioned before, this should be assessed first and then the mobility criteria is only the second step. Looking at uh, the mobility criteria, um, it seems to be a wide agreement that the log KOC is most suitable, available and reasonable parameter to assess mobility. It should be the lowest log KOC value at a pH range of four to nine. However, the European Commission proposes a slightly lower um, criterion than, than we did. Um, so they lower the cutoff for very uh, mobile to 2.0 and to, for mobile to the 3.0. Um, how to assess ionic substances and surfactants is still a little bit under discussion and there has been some proposals to use modeling, but it seems to be that this will only be used as supportive information. And a quick look at the T criterion here. It seems also agreed that the T criteria from the PBT assessment is uh, taking over also in the PMT assessment. This includes the environmental toxicity um, and many um, experts argue for uh, harmonization between the PBT and the PMT assessment concerning the T criteria. There's still some discussion if um, there should be some new criterion edited. So for example, the category two for carcinogen and germ cell mutagen substances, also to add endocrine disruptors. And um, it seems to be that the, the addition of immuno, neuro or terrestrial toxicity that this uh, is probably postponed into the future. So what's next? Let's have an, an outlook how the implementation in regulation will look like. So it seems that we, we can accept, expect the impact assessment that the European Commission is performing uh, for the CLP regulation by mid of this year. And the current status on the new hazard classes is that this will be done using a delegation act uh, by the European Commission and this we can hopefully expect this by end of the year and then the adoption and the publication could happen beginning of next year. And looking at the revision of the CLP regulation here, we, we expect soon a consultation of the regulatory scrutiny board and then after that um, the Commission will launch the process of co-decision in the Council and the Parliament by end of this year. Looking at the revision of the REACH regulation, um, the public consultation just ended in April and we will see um, the impact assessment summer of this year and then we expect the proposal of the Commission by end of this year and the PMT VPM criteria will be implemented into the Article 57 um, and we are still hopeful that um, the extension of the generic risk approach to restriction will also include the PMT VPM substances. A quick look to the regulatory consequences of including these criteria under CLP. Um, this has direct legal consequences in other EU legislations or national regulations. Um, this is a wide range, including chemical regulation, occupational health and safety, environmental and consumer protection. However, um, this has to be implemented in these other regulations. So for to exactly ex assess the regulatory consequences, we would need to be 
consider um, this separately. And with this, I would like to conclude that the PMT and VPVM criteria are well justified by monitoring data and by regulatory justification and have been developed involving over 100 scientists and institutions in Europe. We currently see the switch from the scientific discussion of the criteria to the policy level discussion on the criteria. And we might here see some um, changes um, coming up. And from a REACH perspective, the implementation of the PMT VPM criteria into CLP and into REACH regulation is an essential step to put the protection of Europe's drinking water resources. And we, the German Environment Agency, will continue to propose PMT VPVM substances for the identification as substance of very high concern under REACH. And with this, I would like to thank you and I'm opening for your questions. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. Zero PM, zero pollution of persistent and mobile substances. This project has received funding from the European Union's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Programme under grant agreement number 101036756.